13th of March, 7 p.m. Tell us what happened. You can't start there. You have to start at the beginning. Well, naturally, the first thing you want to do is, you know, I catch the animal, you know, <laughs> hunt the vermin down. You can hire trappers, you can hire trackers. I mean, I personally prefer to do it myself, but, you know, that's, that's me. Every time I try to leave my house, they chase me again. <laughs> they even put smoke in my doorway sometimes to make me leave so they can chase me. Uh, two is once you have it, once you actually caught it, you know, the, the animal, you need, to, you need to take away its ability to fight back, you know, claws, all of that. I mean, you don't want to get hurt. They chase me through the woods. They chase me through streets, down alleyways. I get scratches and bruises. I'm terrified. Uh, three is you need to take away their will. To fight back. This is <laughs> this is easier said than done once you actually know how to do it. I can't take it anymore. Uh, four is you need to make them believe this is important. You need to make them believe that their survival is dependent on us, that they need us to survive. And if you do that right, well, five becomes the easiest one of all. You just Watch them walk willingly to their death. They wouldn't buy see us. They just ignored us. We went all the way there. We waited patiently. We were polite. And nothing. I've emailed them. Called them. And nothing. I even went on bloody social media and bloody tweeted the bastards. Do you know? I even wrote to them with pen and paper. You wouldn't believe the price of stamps these days. And what do I get in return? They ignored us. Pretended we didn't exist. I will not be ignored. Welcome, everyone, to AVA, Abuse Victims Anonymous. We are here today to listen to each other's stories, to hear and to heal our deep wounds caused by others. Not to blame others, but to find acceptance in our new path to recovery. And to shine a light on our dark past so that we have the strength to go forward scars and all into our promising futures i have to speak to some hack some stranger about what i went through hello Kiko. how are you feeling today tyke would you like to share hmm. come on tyke say the words they're not going to be able to help me. They don't know what it was like. They don't know what I went through. Come on, Tyke. You can do this. Hello. My name is Tyke, and I'm a victim of abuse. If I can't hear you, Tyke, I can't help you. They found me guilty. Not, not that I denied that, of course, but... I didn't do anything I regret. I don't know why I'm here. I'm fine. Can you not think of any reasons? No. They sent me here by court order. I, I had no choice. Stupid. Tell me why they made you come here. I don't know. Yes, you do, Tyke. Say it. 
I promise it helps. They deserve what they got, the bastards. They told me to to come here and get better. That's a great start, Tyke. Well done. Denial is the first stage of grief. It helps us to minimise the overwhelming pain of loss. When we process this loss, we are also trying to process emotional pain. Reality shifts and it can take our minds some time to catch up. We reflect on our memories and wonder how to move on. The information we have to explore and the powerful imagery we must process can overwhelm us, so we have to take our time. Denial is our mind's way of doing this, slowing down the process to a more manageable time frame. Denial is not pretending that the event didn't occur, but rather a period of absorption. All over the world, it's accepted that animals should be treated with a certain kindness and compassion. People love animals, like dogs and cats. Can you believe the bloody activists are campaigning for better living arrangements for animals now? Each and every day, billions of animals are in suffering. So. Do people really care about animal abuse? Or is it just the animals they've been told are exempt? Oh, I'm an animal, please, I require better living. <laughs> I mean, it's hypocritical on a cultural level. Whereas we might condemn others for the consumption of horses, dogs and sharks on a moral level, how is that actually different from consuming any other animal? Why is it more acceptable to eat a cow versus a horse? Well, I guess rather than eat them in England, we'll just ride them in races until they break. You, you, you can't keep them all in the same place, you can't keep them all in the dark, you gotta clean up after them every day. Well, what are you, slave? <laughs> Factory farming in the meat industry insemination with the dairy industry, and let's not forget about the most careless industry of all, the fishing industry. Oh, oh, please, don't experiment on them. Oh, oh don't hurt them when they misbehave. Oh, 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 treat them how you'd like to be treated. Fucking... No equality with animal regulations, no equality in how we care for them, no equality based on looks alone. Animals have feelings, fears, they feel joy, they feel pain, and yet no bills to this date have been published to say that animals are sentient creatures on earth and that they need certain protections. You may know me from that film I did, but that doesn't mean my life has been easy. In fact, that film wouldn't exist if our lives were easy. Let me start with the good bit. I'm free. And yes, that is what I wanted and what I needed, despite what the scientists said. And every day, I thank the activists for going out of their way to secure my freedom. Thank you. But that's not what you need to hear. Here is my journey. I had a big family, and I loved them all. Every day we would dance and sing, and then one day, when I was a child. I was stolen away from my family and transported out of my home country 
to a place where no one understood me. There I was forced to live in a tiny, tiny room. I could barely move. They'd make me entertain their guests until I was aching all over. Crying the whole time and begging them to let me go. They'd punish me by starving me and hitting me with these metal rods. I was covered in bruises and scars, but they still made me work. I got so popular, the other children would bully me. I was not safe. I was afraid. Even when I landed my film debut, I had to entertain cameras all day long. Nobody truly understanding my pain, even though I was there to teach the humans the wrongs of using animals for entertainment. It was itself hypocrisy. I was just as trapped by them as I was before. The film did save me eventually, but I never fully recovered from the physical scars, all the mental ones. I never found my family again. But I did find a new one. So here I am, one of the lucky ones, here to pay kindness forward and help others find freedom from their past. And it wasn't until I came across the video Meters Murder that I really started to look at animals as animals and not just food, as beings that are sentient, that have thoughts and feelings. My perspective started to change. I mean, people say chicken. 50-50 on whether they're thinking about animals or food. Half the time people say chicken, they're thinking about food and not a living being. Ah, one of my favorites. Roast pork. So tender and juicy just the right amount of salt. Mm. Please. Danielle, please, I haven't done anything wrong. And when that, when you take that first bite and the blood floods your mouth, delicious. Did you know that thousands of years ago, the earth was cold? Yeah. And do you know how our little species survived then? While our genetic cousins, such as the Neanderthals, died out and went extinct. It wasn't through farming. <laughs> We were hunters, hunter-gatherers, and it wasn't the vegetables that made us survive. Please, you absolutely must try it. It is quite delicious. Come on! Come on! Come on! <laughs> Anger is the second stage of grief. And some say this is the most difficult stage. It's arguably one of the most difficult emotions to process. Once you can no longer deny, you start to feel anger and rage. And this is perfectly normal and nothing to ever 
feel ashamed about. <coughs> Allow yourself to feel the anger pulsing through you. Don't try to suppress your emotions as this can actually have an adverse effect. Accept the rage. Let yourself scream. And share your anger. I just chained her up outside for fresh air. Then I forgot about her, but it was only three days. She seemed fine. Just a bit peckish. I grew up in a circus with my parents. We were captives there. We weren't free. Our jobs were to entertain, to make them laugh. to make them gasp with joy. They adored us, these, these masses of humans. Never for a minute did they ever think whether we wanted to be there, whether we were free, did they know how far we were from home? I watched these humans bully and batter my parents. I watched my parents obey them through tears. Why did you not fight back? Why, Dad? Why did you let them hurt Mum? Was it because of me? If they disobeyed the humans, they would hurt me. But they hurt me anyway. And they hurt mum with whips. And I tried to fight back. I hit back. But it made them worse. It made me worse. I got fucking angry. And I killed him. I killed him, Dad. I killed that bastard who hurt us. Who did this to us. I trampled him into the goddamn dirt.
that he made us live in. Please, I want to go home. Please. I just started reading this article that was published earlier today. Several animal rights protesters are arrested after they poured fake blood onto the Trafalgar Square steps and turned the fountain blood red in solidarity of sentient creatures. The protesters laid in the blood, pretending to be dead, while the banner read, meat is murder. Some signs even said sentient genocide happens every day. They aim to raise awareness of animal rights, but is this the right way to do it? Many locals disagreed. Locals and tourists who witnessed the events disagree and found the whole thing disturbing and unnecessary. One woman from Sunbury had this to say. This is a tourist destination where people bring their families and young children. It was so inappropriate and probably scarred my kids for life all over bullshit. It's hard, you know. We try really hard to do something, make a change, make a difference. It feels like the whole world is against you. I mean, we were there with signs that meant facts and statistics. We were giving out informational packs, talking with people politely, quietly. And yet, all they want to report on is the dramatic stuff. And act like we did something wrong. Sensationalist headlines to get sensational clicks. Let me go, I'm scared! <laughs> what if... What if I said sorry? Do you feel sorry? No. Then perhaps something else? If, if they hadn't treated me the way they did, you'd still be alive. If they'd treated me with kindness, then, then you'd still be alive. And if you'd never been born into the circus, none of this would have happened. And if you'd never seen your family members being abused, none of this would have happened. If I had equal rights to them, it, it never would have happened. But Ike, that's a lot of what ifs. We can't change the past. We can only learn from it. But it's not me that needs to learn from the mistakes of the past. The third stage of grief. Bargaining follows the anger stage. The reaction that we sometimes have to the helplessness and the vulnerability that comes through loss is an attempt to regain control. There are other ways that you can choose to rebuild structure in your life. Bargaining almost never finds a permanent solution. The logic is that even if you can dodge the bullet this time, death is still inevitable. The bargaining process helps the individual process this and accept this on an emotional and psychological level. If no bargain is reached, then the individual moves quickly onto stage four, depression. Those bloody activists, God. running around, buzzing and making a nuisance of themselves, they're like gnats. God damn, Rickon. We're just doing our jobs. And, and, and they make us out to be the bad guys. Yeah. We make an honest living to provide for our families. And what do they do? They come around here calling us murderers, rapists. And they send my wife death threats. Death threats. And they say they're better than us. Uh, yeah, well, it seems to me that these activists are just as bad, if not worse. God. 
I just do my job. And they threaten hard-working family men like myself. And then they, 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 they said my wife would go to hell for, for abusing innocent little animals. God. Bullshit. They don't have feelings, these, these things. They don't think. They don't feel. They were smart animals. They would fight back. Uh, stay still, Jesus. Uh, just, uh, or they'd learn to speak. But no, they don't. Why? Because they are dumb creatures. That's what they are. That's what the most of the survival of the fittest. That's what I say. Predators and prey and all that. They were made for our consumption. Yeah. I'm simply asking you to delve a little deeper into what I'm asking. We're just skimming the surface. I want to break through that surface. Oh, bullshit! None of this is my fault. I, I didn't do anything wrong. They started it. They provoked me. No, Tyke. You're not being honest with yourself. You're pushing the blame away. Only once we accept our behaviour can we truly hope to build new foundations for our new lives. What would you know, huh? Have, have you ever hurt someone? Ever killed someone? You're unqualified for this. You don't know what you're talking about. It's okay to be angry, Tyke. It's okay to feel lost and alone in this situation. I'm here to listen and to guide. I won't know all the answers, but I promise we will find them together. Eco-terrorist. How in the hell have I been branded a fucking terrorist? All I did was break into a factory and set some animals free. In what way is that inciting terror in others? I did warn you. Slightly illegal, maybe. Completely moral? Definitely. You broke the law, and what's worse is... I did the right thing. I'm not ashamed. And I'll do it again. If you do it again, they'll lock you up and they'll throw away the key. Listen. Some things are just going too far. Too far? We haven't even begun. If they want to threaten me, I'll threaten them right back. No. We... Don't lower ourselves to their level. We remain the good in this world of bad. Look, we tried raising awareness through social media. We wrote to our local MP asking for help. We wrote to the companies asking for them to understand. Oh, and the world hasn't changed? Did you really think that one small activist in Kingston-upon-Thames was really going to make a difference. I thought I could appeal to their humanity. Humanity? Christ! We can't fix it! We can kid ourselves into thinking that we're making a change, that we're making a difference, but it's not true. It's not a lie. The way we treat animals is embedded into society so deep that most of us don't even know what to what extent. Oh, it's not a mass conspiracy. Why is everything a mass conspiracy with you? Everything, everything is connected and you're a fool if you can't see it. You're wrong. Then hear me, I beg you. We can ask for change, but unless it benefits them... Unless it makes them money, it won't happen. They don't even value human life. They have the capacity for change. I've seen it. If they can love, they can do good. The number one source of income on this planet is war. And you're telling me humans are good? We thrive on destruction and death and tell ourselves that it's okay.
because it's happening elsewhere or that we're aiding some other country, but it's lies. We are tricked, tricked into thinking that this is the only way of life. And then if any part of it changed, any one small part of it changed, then life as we know it would fall apart. But it is not true. You are proof that I am right. There is good in you. Your ability to see the world differently from those that rule it is the hope we need to make change. Wait, are you admitting to breaking and entering? Please, just let me finish. Please, you have to help me. Francis, if you can't help me, save my baby, please. During our experience of processing grief, there comes a time when our minds calm down and we start to slowly look at the reality of our situation. Bargaining no longer feels like an option, so we are facing what is actually happening. We start to feel the loss more abundantly. Our panic begins to subside and the emotional fog starts to clear and the process feels more present and unavoidable. In these moments, we tend to pull inwards as the sadness grows. And this can mean that we end up retreating, being less sociable, not reaching out to others about what we're going through. And while this is a very natural stage of grief, Dealing with depression can be very isolating. Well, wait a minute. This article says that the government already declared animals sentient beings years back. Well, if that's true, if animals are already considered sentient, then why are they treated the way they are? You don't know. Is something wrong? Are you okay? Wait, are you telling me that you are thinking of doing something illegal, something courageous to su stop the suffering of another being? I agree. So, when are we doing this dastardly deed of heroic rescue? The last stage of grief is acceptance. In this stage, you may find that your emotions begin to stabilise. You re-enter reality. You begin to come to terms with the fact of this new reality and you're okay with it. And this doesn't mean it's a good thing, but it's something you can live with. It's definitely a time of adjustment and readjustment. And this stage doesn't mean that you're going to have no bad days. There'll be good days and then there'll be bad days and there'll be good days again. You will still have bad days where you might be uncontrollably sad. But the good days will always, or at least tend to, outnumber the bad. Hi. This is my very old friend, Tilipan. Hey. 
but Selakam and I have a very similar past. We've both shared a lot of the same pain. But he's also had a very similar experience in life to you. Telecom, would you like to explain? Yes. So like Kiko, I was captured at a young age, tortured and forced to perform. And like you, Tyg, I fought back. I killed one of my captors. Um, they tried to cover it up. I killed another one uh, in front of an audience this time. They couldn't cover that one up. But I guess I make them too much money. They could have freed me, they could have killed me, but instead all they did was punish me more. So I decided to set up a campaign to give better living conditions and treatment um, to us animals that are forced to be in this entertainment business. They done horrific things to all of us here. And no one judges them for it. We fight for our freedom and we're punished for it. Humans fear differences. They always have. I mean, just look at their history. We cannot cure them of that fear, nor can we snap them out of it. All we can do is accept them as they are, but remind them that we are not that different and we can grow together in harmony. You did what you did. And now what you have to do is accept it and move forward and do what you can to change your character from the villain to the hero. I'm a victim of abuse. But I no longer see myself as the victim. After your past, it is a success to see you here today and know that everything you do is a step toward growth. Yes, I... I killed a man. I ask God for forgiveness every day. I asked the family of that man for forgiveness and they gave it to me. I've done my time in jail my whole life. Only in my death will be my freedom. Tyke. No, I will not kill myself. But I will make my life mean something. Then I hope my death will not be in vain. Acceptance was our goal in your recovery. So congratulations, Tyke. Let me go, I'm scared! <laughs> We need your help. There's a young animal who needs saving. She's pregnant and she's alone and, and we, need to, we need to find her. Well, I don't think I'm maybe strong enough to. I've been feeling a bit under the weather as of late. It's nothing serious, is it? Oh no, no, please don't fuss about me. But maybe to the come, could you? Of course. Yeah, and me. I, I want to be the hero of my own life now. Excellent. Then we move tonight. Please, I want to go home. You didn't do anything wrong. I see. We we may have gotten caught. Well, almost. We escaped, but this might come and bite us in the ass. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. What will they come for you? Yes, they will. Oh my gosh. Oh, what the hell do you want? Bring them back, and I won't call the authorities. No, 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 no. Uh, it's just a few animals. You have insurance. This ain't shit. It's my job. I could get fired for this. You think this is some kind of game? Are right, you and all these vermin are gonna pay? I'm in charge here. You're in charge. You're, you're nothing but a rapist and a murderer. Okay, everybody calm down. How about we solve it so everybody wins? No. Kiko! 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 What's going on? Is she all right? Kiko, are you okay? Pneumonia. I'm sorry, I tried to hide it. Stay with me! Stay with me! No! You did this! You did nothing but harm us and torture us and kill us! Hey, get back, get back! You treat us like we're different, like we're something different from you, but you, you humans never learn from your mistakes! It's just why you get, get back! <laughs> Alpha, stop now! You can change how this ends! I warned him! I warned him! I. One of my freedom! No! Ty! Why? I had to. I had to. He was gonna hurt me. He 
You see the vicious cycle we live in. We dress like you. We fear like you. We we cry like you. We defend like you. Can't you see that we're all the same? We may look different on the outside, but on the inside, our souls are the same. We 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 fear. We hate. We we love. We hope. We we were all just really scared. Big misunderstanding. So this was just an act of speciesism. There's nothing we can do. Yes. Yes, there is. <laughs>